Hello, my name is Andrew and welcome back to All About Russia. The story of Russia is characterised by some as a quest for a warm water port. That does not mean that Russia does not have access to seas. They do in fact have access to 14 separate seas. To cover this enormous challenge, artists of Geoperspective and myself have teamed up to bring you the seven largest and seven smallest seas that Russia has access to. If we're ready, let's begin. Dubai. The Laptev Sea is the seventh largest sea that Russia has access to, coming at over 270,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Myanmar. As a northern sea, it has no international boundaries. However, domestically, it borders the Krasnoyarsk Krai and the Saka Republic. The sea is named after explorers Dmitry and Karaton Laptev, although previously had been known as the Northern Skjold Sea after the famous explorer. The sea is frozen from October to May annually, making it of limited use to Russia year round. Historically, the sea was used for hunting and fishing by the Evenk, Yochagir, Saka and other northern peoples. Russians first reached the sea in 1629, when Cossack Promoshelniki arrived seeking tribute through furs from the northern peoples of the region. In 1735, the Laptev brothers would map the sea for the Russian crown. It would be explored again in 1878 by Adolf Nordenskjöld in greater detail, earning the Swedes the name of the sea for a while. Resources were discovered along the coastlines of this sea in the form of coal, diamonds and oil, which promptly made it an area of interest for gulag construction in the 1920s. Many thousands of people would be worked to death along the coast of this sea well into the 1950s. Today, however, the Laptev Sea, like many of the northern seas of Russia, is essentially a Russian lake, used for limited fishing and hunting by indigenous groups, but used by the state for resource extraction, scientific expeditions, and geopolitical claims to the Arctic resources. The Kara Sea is the sixth largest sea that Russia has access to. It is 358,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Nigeria. It has no international borders, but domestically it borders the Arkhangelsk Oblast, the Yamalonets Autonomous Oblast, and the Krasnoyarsk Krai. The sea is named after the Kara River, which takes its name either from the Nenets word for homokt ice, or from the old Turkic word for north. There's a long history of the sea being used by Nenets, Komi and other northern peoples for hunting and fishing. Russians had known of this sea since at least the 12th century, with Kievan Rus commanding tribute from some of the northern tribes around the sea. But it will be brought to greater attention in 1556 when Stephen Burrow, under commission from Queen of England, sailed into the sea looking for a northwestern passage to Asia. He failed to do so getting stuck on the ice. The sea was largely used for moving deeper into Siberia and little else for a long time. The sea's most exciting period will come in 1942 when German warships entered, chasing and retrieving Soviet ships. The Kara Sea freezes from November to May, so this was a hard task and several Soviet ships managed to slip away. Later Soviet interest in the region grew as gas deposits were found. Furthermore, its remote location made it an arguably perfect place to dump nuclear waste. Today the Kara Sea is a surprisingly polluted sea, with state interests grounded in resource extraction, whilst indigenous communities still try to survive on its cold and arctic shores. The Sea of Japan is the fifth largest sea that Russia has access to. With 377,000 square miles in size, it is also just larger than Tanzania, and serves as the international border for Japan, China and both of the Koreas. Domestically, it also borders the Khabarovsk Krai, the Sakhalin Oblast and the Priyamursky Krai. Interestingly, the Russian name for this sea, Japanski Morye or Japanese Sea, is something of a misnomer. This is because the Japanese call it the North Sea, the Koreans call it the East Sea, whilst the Chinese call it, very practically, the Whale Sea after its main use to them. There is a long history of usage in the region, with the sea being used for fishing, whaling, trading and serving as an invasion route for centuries before any European contact came. Russian awareness of this sea came in 1733, when Vitus Bering mapped and explored the Kuril and Sakhalin Islands. Russians themselves would not actually use the Sea of Japan greatly until 1849. In that year, settlers arrived illegally to mine coal on the island of Sakhalin, an island which technically was a part of Japan at the time. These miners would be legalised 11 years later, under the Treaty of Shimodo, however, between Russia and Japan. Access to the sea greatly improved Russia's Asiatic trade, particularly with Japan 
and Korea. Though this axis was curtailed after the 1905 Russo-Japanese War, which the Russians lost, access was restored at the end of the Second World War, with both the entirety of the Sakhalin and Kuril Islands taken by Russia. Despite being partially frozen from November to March yearly, access to the sea has done wonders for the Russian economy, allowing greater access to the market of East Asia. The Eastern Fleet is based at Vladivostok and serves as a deterrent to any Japanese ambitions over the Kuril Islands. The East Siberian Sea is the fourth largest sea that Russia has access to and it is 381,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Tanzania. Internationally, it has no borders, as it is surrounded by other Russian-dominated seas. Domestically, it borders the Sakha Republic, as well as the Chukotka Autonomous Okrug. The sea does have another name in Yakut, but it is just the Yakut version of East Siberian Sea. Very disappointing, Yakutia. Historically, the sea was used much like other northern seas for hunting and fishing, supporting nomadic Arctic peoples such as the Yakuts, Evenks, and Yugahirs. Russia's access to the sea began in 1648, when Simon Dajnov arrived, mapping the area for the Tsar. Expeditions in 1735, 1820, and 1909 would bring it to greater Russian attention. The discovery of minerals surrounding the sea would see it used as a place of punishment in the form of gulags in the 1930s. Due to its severe northern location, the sea is frozen for the longest period of time during October to July annually. As such, its economic relevance to Russia today is limited, but with global warming, this may soon change. The Barents Sea is the third largest sea that Russia has access to. It is over 540 thousand square kilometers in size, making it larger than the nation of Peru. Internationally, it borders Norway and historically was known as the Murmanskoye Morje, or Norwegian Sea. Domestically, it borders both the Murmansk and Arhangelsk blasts. Both Russia and Norway use similar names for the sea, named after William Barent, who mapped the sea in 1853. Before access to the Baltic Sea was possible, this was one of the main arteries of Russian trade, with the southern coastal waters being ice-free all year round, whilst further north were permanently frozen. The Russians had had access to this sea since at least the 12th century, with the Novgorodian Republic having dominion over the region. It had been a route used by Norwegian Vikings to both raid and trade with the northern settlements of Russia, Hence its traditional name, but in the 16th century, this expanded to nations such as the Netherlands, England and Scotland as well. The importance of the Barents Sea declined in 1721 with the ascension of the Baltic Sea as the main seafaring trade route of Russia, but its value would resurface in times of war. Much like its neighbour the White Sea, during the Second World War, the Barents Sea served as a lifeline for Russia, allowing the Arctic convoys to deliver much needed food, ammunition and medicine. Today, the Barents Sea is primarily used for resource gathering in oil, gas and cod fishing. Russia's access to the sea does offer them some geopolitical claims to the Arctic resources and the northern fleet of the Russian Navy is based here at Severomorsk. Sadly, pollution, much of it coming from nuclear waste being dumped in the 1990s, was and still is a large problem for the region. The Sea of Okhotsk is the second largest that Russia has access to, standing at over 600,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Mongolia. Internationally, the Sea of Okhotsk borders Japan through the disputed Kuril Island chain, whilst domestically it borders the Khabarovsk Krai, Magadan Oblast, Kamchatka Krai and Sakhalin Oblast. The sea is named after the Okhot River, which itself is named from the Evan word for river. In a bizarre twist, however, that is the same core word for hunt in Russian, making the Sea of Okhotsk the hunter's sea. The sea had been used for thousands of years by the Evan, Yugahir, and Ainu peoples, who hunted and fished in these rough northern waters. Russia first reached these waters in 1641 when Cossack adventurer and Pramlishnyanik Ivan Moskvitin arrived in search of furs. Due to its distance from Moscow, it received limited interest, not being officially surveyed again until 1733. This was Russia's first access to the Asian maritime trade, but it would serve as the base to trade with Korea and Japan until superseded by the newfound access to the Sea of Japan in 1840. Following the Second World War, area would grow in importance again, with several Soviet submarines regularly patrolling the waters. Furthermore, its proximity to the Kuril Islands and Hokkaido made it ripe for spying and intelligence gathering operations by the Americans. Today, the sea is largely seen as a Russian lake, with a continuation of submarine patrols and counterintelligence operations, whilst boasting a rich biodiversity 
and notable resource deposits, the rough waters of the sea have made it only lightly tapped into by the Russian state, something that may well change with the advent of new technologies. The Bering Sea is the single largest sea that Russia has access to. It is 770,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Mexico. To put this in proportion, in 2018, a meteor hit the Bering Sea, releasing a force equal to 10 atomic bombs. This sea is so ludicrously large, not only was the impact completely absorbed by the water leaving no one hurt, but it barely registered on the seismography graphs. Internationally, it borders the United States of America, whilst domestically, it borders the Kamchatka Krai and the Chukchi Autonomous Okrug. Traditionally called the Beaver Sea after its main attraction, the Bering Sea takes its name from Vitus Bering, who explored and mapped the sea for the Russian crown in 1728. Access to this sea began in 1642 with the arrival of Cossack Promeshelniki. It is frozen annually from November to June and traditionally has been used for hunting and fishing by the indigenous Chukchi, Yukagir, and Aleuts. Due to its frozen condition most of the year, the sea itself was not of great value to Russia, serving as one of the last places where easily obtained fur pelts could be gotten, a value that decreased as they were depleted over time. From the Alaskan purchase of 1867, Russian interest in the sea was minimal, with regular British, American and French whaling vessels ploughing the waters of the Bering Sea throughout the late 19th century. This did prompt some limited security and colonization by the Russian state fearing a weak entry point, but the sea would not grow into real national importance until the advent of the Cold War. Due to its proximity to America, during the Cold War, submarine and anti-espionage technology was employed en masse throughout the region. Whilst today the sea still has great national importance for Russia, for many Russians it holds little relevance. Access to this sea provides some of the indigenous communities on its shores a way of life, whilst on the national level it does provide some potential geopolitical claims. The Bering Sea is famous for its punishingly cold waters and harsh conditions, making travel across it at any time of the year difficult. This fact, combined with the sheer distance to Moscow, makes the Bering Sea the largest, but arguably the most unimportant sea that Russia has access to. And there we have it, the seven largest seas that Russia has access to. I would like to give a big thank you to Artis for his help on this project. For more content from him, please check out his channel down below in the link. My name is Andrew and thank you for watching. Пока!